and we are back thanks guys for clicking on the video please like and subscribe comment below and we're going to talk about something near and dear to my heart we're going to talk about the heavyweight boxing championship bout that took place in the uk this past saturday uh, I am back in the studio tonight. It's been a while since I've been able to uh, get in the studio and uh, do a video. Um, but I am back in the studio tonight, and we need to talk about this boxing match. Um, there's a lot of discussion on it, uh, controversy as well. But um, let's get right into it. Um, Anthony Joshua was the... And, as most people recognize, the true heavyweight champion, uh, the title holder of the WBA, WBO, and IBF heavyweight world championship title belts. The WBC belt is uh, with Tyson Fury after he was able to defeat Deontay Wilder by a uh, knockout. Uh, this bout here was for those three title belts and uh, Anthony Joshua face uh, Alexander Yusik from the hard-hitting Ukraine. Now, this bout here, uh, we saw Anthony Joshua lose his titles in what many say was a lackluster effort. A lot of people felt that Joshua just didn't show heart. They felt that um, it's been the same thing with him his entire career since Vladimir Klitschko put him on the ground. Um, since we saw him have to get up off the canvas several times to earn those belts, he hasn't quite exactly done that to keep them. So this here has been the issue with him, and I, I don't know if we're ever going to see anything different out of Anthony Joshua. Uh, this bout in particular, if we take a look at the judges' scorecards, he lost the first judge one at ringside, had it 115 to 113. Uh, second judge at ringside had it 116 to 112. And the last judge ringside had it 117 to 112. So he lost on all three judges' scorecards. And if we take a look at the, the CompuBox punch stats, in terms of, let's, let's take a look at um, total jabs because Anthony Joshua being the taller man with the longer reach and stronger man, they tied with uh, landing 52 jabs each. Joshua did throw 427 jabs at a 12% landing rate, while Yusik landed 52 jabs while throwing 309 jabs at a 16.8% land rate. So the smaller jabber outlanded Joshua, um, although he threw a lot less jabs he was more accurate uh, let's take a look at body punches thrown joshua threw 641 body punches landing 123 while Usyk threw 529 body punches landing 149 so he threw less landed more uh Usyk landed at a 28 percent land rate and let's take a look at power punches we know aj was a much stronger man in this bout uh, also, he was outlanded in body punches. Um, I'm sorry, power punches. Power punches, Joshua threw 214, landed 71. Usyk threw 220 while landing 96. So he threw more and landed more. Usyk landed power punches at a 43% rate compared to Joshua's 33% rate. That's concerning. Um, but a lot of Brit fans and a lot of Joshua fans are saying, well, hold up a minute. Um, Joshua was winning the fight until round nine, okay, when he had this apparent eye injury. Okay, well, let's let's take a look at the scorecards. Um, so before the eye injury, Joshua was up on the scorecards. Uh, judge one at judge one at ringside had it 77-75 for Joshua. Uh, judge two at ringside had it a draw, 76 each. Uh, but Judge 3 had the uh, the Ukrainian winning 77-76. So if the fight were to have ended before the eye injury, it would have been a draw. Uh, my personal opinion, I did watch the fight. And I think, I think that Yusek was in control of the fight for the most part. Um, 
even before the eye injury, I wouldn't have given Joshua the fight. I think Usyk was... And I mean, look, we, we, we can't ignore the fact that even before the eye injury, Usyk was busier, he was more active. And I mean, the reality is Usyk won, clearly won the first three rounds. You know, by round six, Joshua was gaining momentum momentum and feeling a little bit more comfortable but by no means did I have Joshua winning this fight even before the eye injury so um, I think Usyk deserves to be champion Um, I guess there's a rematch clause they are going to plan a rematch for early February of 2022 Um, but you know what I don't want to talk about a rematch right now because I think it's going to end the same way this fight ended, maybe even worse. We saw Joshua punch drunk in the 11th and 12th rounds, and some will blame it on the eye injury, but the reality is we have a clear winner, and I don't think the eye injury had anything to do with it. I think that result would have happened either way. Um, What does this do for the rankings? The heavyweight rankings. What does this do? Let's take a look at the heavyweight rankings right now. So if we take a look at the heavyweight world rankings, it's there's going to be a huge mix up here. Now, a lot of people think that Tyson Fury should slide in number one, but I do not. And uh, my rankings will be a little bit different from unbiased. I feel that Usyk gets the number one spot without a doubt. No controversy. He beat the man. He is the man. Not that Joshua was the man, but he did have the belts. Usyk is number one. Okay. Number two is not Tyson Fury, in my opinion. I think it's Deontay Wilder. And reason being is I think it's obvious Tyson Fury cheated in that bout. Clearly unprofessional. And clearly robbed Deontay Wilder from... It's just cheating, just straight up cheater. I mean, do your research, look it up. I'm not going to get into that. There's plenty of evidence out there. Video, the video, the photos, the still images, they're out there. Tyson Fury cheated. He is not a champion. He's a dirtbag. Okay. So Yusek is number one. Deontay Wilder is number two. And I will put Dylan White rank number three okay i think dylan white is the most ducked heavyweight right now i don't think no one wants to fight dylan white i think dylan white will take tyson furry to the cleaners i think he'll take deontay wilder to the cleaners and i think he'll probably just destroy Usyk. okay so i have dylan white num- number three i have tyson furry rank number four and number five i actually have uh Joe Joyce and number six Joseph Parker okay so that's what I have so far just gonna run that back to you Usyk number one number two Deontay Wilder number three Dylan White number four Tyson Fury number five Joe Joyce and rank number six Joseph Parker okay number seven I actually have Andy Ruiz Okay, I think that he has power, a ton of power, and I think a lot of people are ducking him. Okay, number eight, I would have Luis Ortiz. Okay, a lot of people are ducking Luis Ortiz. Watch out. Okay, Uh, number nine, I have Alex uh, Povetkin. And um, number 10, I actually have um, Kubret Pruev. So, I mean, that would be my top 10. And... Let me know, comment below what you think, what would be your top 10. Uh, but that that's my top 10. And now as we um, get back to what's going to happen with these title bouts, um, the rematch is scheduled for February. In my opinion, I think it's going to be a repeat of what we just saw um, with a possible stoppage. Okay, I think that Yusek, now that he knows what he's up against, I mean, forget the eye injury. Stop thinking about the eye injury. That had nothing to do with it up to... Just just throw the eye injury out the window. Usyk was winning the fight, in my opinion. And if we fast forward to February, I think he's 
he's pretty much going to train to outwork Joshua. He already threw more punches than him and landed more punches than him. I think he's going to train harder with that Lomachenko type of style to where we might see a, a clear 2-1 to one outlanding grade. I mean, Yusek's in his energy in this battle was amazing. He came out the first three rounds, and Joshua just looked a tad bit slow. Um, I, I think it's going to be a stoppage, to be honest with you, if they fight again in February. If there's no legalities and they go through with it, I think he's going to stop Joshua. And then the reality is I think I do think Wilder will win the rematch against Furry. And then I think we're going to see a match between Wilder and Yusek. Um, that's a matchup that if Wilder does not fix his his one two his jab, if he does not learn how to throw consistent one twos, he he has a decent jab, but he's got to put something behind it instead of loading up with a you know a huge uppercut or right hook once in a while. He's got to get more active and just learn to land a straight right cross. I mean, if he can land a consistent, then he might even have more knockouts than, than he has, you know, like that's even possible. But, um, yeah, he would be a major threat to anyone out there. If, I mean, Mayweather has offered to train him several times. I don't know why he keeps turning him down. I mean, I've, I've seen Deontay Wilder many times and Mayweather's, he's always around. So, I mean, I know they know the same people. And I don't know why he doesn't take Mayweather up on his offer. But um, one quick thing I want to take a look at before we get out of here. Um, I want to take a look at the all-time rankings. And let's let's see where Joshua stacks on the all-time rankings. Is Joshua a top 10 heavyweight of all time? First of all, I, I want to say no. I don't think he is. I think Joshua, for his height and size, no disrespect to him. I don't want to disrespect any athlete, but it's just my personal opinion. I think for his height and size and strength, I think I think he's a little soft. And again, that's no disrespect. I don't want to disrespect these professional athletes. I box, and it's just getting in that ring takes lion's heart. But um, I do not have Joshua in the top ten. Um, my top ten heavyweights of all time, as the list here shows very comparable i do have muhammad ali as number one um number two i have rocky marciano okay number three i actually have joe lewis okay um rocky did beat joe lewis and um i think rocky's undefeated record is is very very underrated okay um Number three is not even Holyfield, but um, in my opinion, uh, number three is going to be Floyd Patterson. Okay, Floyd Patterson was an amazing, amazing champion. All right, so that's Muhammad Ali. That is Rocky Marciano. That is Joe Frazier. Number four is Floyd Patterson. Um, I do not have Evander Holyfield on there at all. I have Mike Tyson next. The reason I have Mike Tyson on the list is because of the fear he put in opponents. Okay, you can say his reign as champion was somewhat short. He did have a lot of legalities and off the off the ring issues, but the fear and excitement that Tyson created for the world made the heavyweight champion something of a landmark in the States. Okay. So I do have Tyson next. And then um, I would have, um, again, Evander Holyfield's not on this list. Then I would actually have uh, George Foreman. Why George Foreman? Because of the fear that George Foreman put into people. Okay, George Foreman was a very fearful heavyweight. And number seven, I have Larry Holmes. Just for his reign, Larry Holmes' reign as champion was very long and tremendous and if it wasn't for, you know, someone like Mike Tyson coming along, he'd probably still be champion. But Larry Holmes was very dedicated to his graph, and he was a great champion. Um, number eight, I have Jack Johnson. Very historic, pioneer, heavyweight. And, I mean, he had, what, like, almost, like, he had over 100 wins, you know, or something like that. Unbelievable. 
then I uh, have Joe Frazier. Uh, Joe Frazier with the epic battles that we've seen. Um, actually, my trainer um, was trained by Joe Frazier. Um, but yeah, pioneer from Philadelphia, legend in the game. And um, the reality is those wars with Ali just shaped what a heavyweight champion should be. And um, my number 10 heavyweight of all time is actually Lennox Lewis. I have Lennox Lewis up there because not only did he retire at the top of his game, but um, I mean, Lennox Lewis beat everyone in, in his era. I mean, and, and if he didn't fight you, that's because you ducked him. So I think Lennox Lewis, and if we had all of these guys in their prime, I think Lewis would beat most of them, the reality. But I don't have Evander Holyfield on that list. I think Evander ducked Mike Tyson for a lot of his career. He fought him on the downturn, and I don't really look at those wins against Mike Tyson as that big of a deal on Holyfield's resume. And if they fought today on thriller or something i think tyson probably beat him bad but yeah lennox lewis is number 10 that rounds out the top 10 heavyweights comment below let me know what you think um what do you think about the fight is joshua done i think he is um but what do you think is you sick um is you sick the new star i don't know comment below like subscribe share the video and uh let's talk boxing guys um mayweather de la hoya is that gonna happen would anyone pay to see it what do you think of Canelo? Is Caleb talking too much junk? Did he upset Canelo? Is Canelo going to take him out? Uh, what about Porter Crawford? Is this the biggest test of Crawford's career so far? Can he fight Porter or will he try to box him? I don't know. What about Herrick Shakur Stevenson? Is Stevenson too soft? Is he, is he too young for Jamal? Will Jamal show him what a, a grown man power is? I don't know. We'll see. Comment below. Thanks for clicking on the video. Thanks for taking your time out to watch the video. I appreciate it.